Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Super Symmetry. In the last episode, we started the oil line, and today, we have finally reached 12 polytetrafluoroethylene. It didn't take very long. I don't remember what I did while I was waiting. Oh wait, I, I bolt crafted some stuff. Yeah, I batched the, um, the machine casings, so we're now at a all-time high, 40 of them. And then we're also, uh, more motors. Probably should do that for HV motors, which is something I need to do. Just with HV motors, I, I can't just throw away 32 of the thingies. Uh, stainless steel ingots. It's everybody's favorite day. Extruder pipe sh shape day. Today we're making the newest extruder shape. Yep, that's right. We're making the large pipe. Because, of course, we can't do this by hand. <laughs> so, uh, let's put in our wire cutters. Make this, and then we make this. Come on, now. Make it. Uh, you kidding me? Make it. There we go. And then we're making a pipe. Now, the way the pipes work is that you have different tiers of them, or different sizes, and using the different size, you can make different sizes using the wire cutters in different positions, basically. So a large pipe would be that. Um, a huge pipe, I think, is this. No. Huge pipe is this, isn't it? No. Huge pipe is this. Large pipe. Huh? Well, we want a large pipe. A huge pipe would be quite excessive. We already have that. But the large pipe should take uh, six of these and then turn them into a large pipe. It's the final component to the fluidized bed reactor. Besides hatches. <laughs> which is nice. We've been waiting a good long time for this one. And now it's finally done. We're not gonna get an advancement for this because if you look here, it, for some reason, um, we haven't done this and this, even though we technically already did them. Also, we're not doing that one anyway. We're just gonna completely skip all of this. It doesn't matter that much. And we've already done it, so why would we even do it again? So fortunately for us, titanium is processed at medium voltage, which is not expensive. Um, yeah, basically, if we were to do a high voltage, we'd need the high voltage hatches, which are much more expensive. So to make the hatches, we have to go downstairs, grab four steel ingots and one wrought iron. Well, technically not even. We just gotta grab four of these guys, and then I know where to go get some iron ingots. Now if you head out over this way, Back into the titanium processing. The first process in titanium has a byproduct of iron. Which is rather good because now I can just get iron ingots and not have to do much. I just have to wait for aluminum to do its stuff. Then I can come back, iron ingot. You set this to the third setting, run these guys through, and then you run these through the lathe. And you need exactly one ingot to make this guy happen. And something all machines need is a maintenance hatch, and this guy is as easy as you just do it in this crafting table and you press this button. Oh, and then you forget that you have all the stuff it needs. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We're doing very good at this. Now, what else does it need? Does it need a screwdriver or something? Nah. And then you run these guys through the lathe, and, uh... What's the with that? Do we plunge the polytetrafluoroethylene? I think so. Goodbye. Ha. So we're gonna make two energy hatches. And the final thing you need to do with these recipes is you need to check what it needs. Because it needs uh, two inputs. It needs, um, for example, it needs the root tile and the carbon. So two items. But that means that you can do that in one level of the hatch. And then as far as the rest of the stuff goes, the chlorine. Uh, that's uh, one fluid hatch and then three more fluid hatches. And two item bosses. But what kind? Well, that's pretty simple. All the stuff on that side should be output on this side should be input. Now this should actually be the final stage of our titanium processing setup. Or, well, not the final stage. This is like one of the uh, uh, beginning stages. First stages, actually. Now that I think about it. This is built much like the polymerization tank from what I understand. And it's quite simple. You just, um... You have to have four of the things on the bottom here, uh, structural supporting thingies, and then you have to have the stuff go four blocks up. And it's quite funny. It's quite literally just a polymerization tank with ex more expensive blocks. 
And I'm gonna build it like this. Basically what I want is to have the um, this maintenance edge back here, the input edge here, and then we're gonna have an input bus. That's an output bus, but we're gonna have the input bus up top. And then we'll, on this side we'll have the output bus going backwards. And then back here we can just have an EBF. Actually, if we're gonna have an EBF right back there, then it makes no sense to have this guy here and we should move him over to here. The input bus will be on this front side. Now a wonderful byproduct of this is actually, I think it gives carbon monoxide? Yeah, it does, and it gives quite a bit. But it also gives ashes, and that's the item output. Which is not what we want, that's kinda, kinda just garbage, and needs to go in the waste bin. So, um, that's gonna go down here, we're gonna have a box thing, and it's gonna collect them. But other than that, that should be the whole structure completed. That is a wonderful machine. Beautiful. Now to make it work, you gotta go ahead and get your tools, as always. Grab wire cutters, screwdriver, hammer, hammer, so mallet, hammer, uh, that's basically crowbar. That's basically it. Okay, so, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go ahead and walk up to this guy, and then we're gonna say, work. And it will become maintenance fine. And then we're gonna need an 8 times low voltage battery buffer, which can easily be made over, well, actually, uh, yeah, it can still be made over here. We just gotta make the wires first. Which is, um, quite, quite annoying. Oh, those, those are silver wires. Uh, we definitely have ten. That's hiding right there. Alright, so we just take those, make four times, and then we make eight times. One, two, three, four. And then we take those and we make them back into one times wire. Which gives you thirty-two of these. So it takes exactly thirty-two to make, uh, four of these. And to make a battery box, you just take all of that, you click eight times, and then it's good. Now we're gonna need a transformer. Now transformers are more than meets the eye. They're actually not. No, not at all. These are not more than meets the eye. They're actually really cheap. If they were more than meets the eye, then they'd require like Ulpic or something disgusting. <laughs> Some disgusting circuitry abomination would be required to make this thing work. Okay, so that's that's how that's gonna go. It's gonna go like that, and then we're gonna have um Yeah, this is the input is on the top. Input is top side, and then this is the output side. Uh, you gotta be careful with this, because if you connect to anything, put any machines near these, it explodes. Potentially. Now these are the legendary 8 times magnesium diboride wires, however, there is also this, which is the 4 times stuff. <laughs> which is, um... Why do we, uh... This is going to become pipe spaghetti, isn't it? It's gonna become... Yes, this is literally gonna become pipe, pipe spaghetti. Uh, we might have a problem here. Pipe spaghetti is no good. Alright, so I got some batteries from this guy, who just so happened to have eight. I've split his batteries with the other guy. Nice. Well, you don't even use that guy much anyway, anyway. But we're gonna need him. For titanium itself, it does need that. Alright. Now this is going to require carbon. So we're gonna put some carbon in there. Chlorine, which we actually don't have any of because of polytetrafluoroethylene. And rutile, which we have an entire box of. This is because we process a lot of aluminum. Alright, so let's go ahead and take this out. And do... Wait, what is in here? Why is there cobaltite in there? Anyway, like I said before, we're gonna do a demonstration of this. We're gonna go ahead and take the rutile, we're gonna go ahead and turn it into rutile dust, and we're gonna go ahead and see if we have any chlorine. Because we might actually have a barrel of that just lying around, hopefully we do. Although I doubt it. We honestly probably don't. So we have 28 of these, that should make a lot. A lot of titanium tetrachloride. Well, we don't have any chlorine, unfortunately. So, we're gonna have to go make some. Uh, we're gonna take the root tile, we're gonna put it in there. Now, remember the oil system we were designing yesterday? Well, there is actually a way we can take the salt water and byproducts like that. And actually, we're going to use them into this guy. So, in order to make that happen, we're gonna take a pump. Slap it on there. We're gonna take a fluid filter, and we're gonna add salt water. That is not how you spell water at all. Put that in there. Salt water. But, except that's important. And look at that. Works like a charm. That will probably give us absolutely not what we need. Let's go ahead and give it a check. Gives you salt and some water back. Water is useless. Uh, we're gonna have to dump that. But anyway, it gives us salt. Two of them. And we're gonna reconfigure the setup here to actually supply chlorine everywhere in the base. Yeah, because uh, chlorine is a high demand item. Now, whenever this thing actually produces chlorine, it seems to send uh, liquids down, it looks like. Yeah, it sends them down. 
Why is this like this? That's just soapstone. Why? Why? I don't understand why the pipe is like that. I, I'm not questioning it, but uh, yeah, send it down, and it sends it into the pipes through. It, it goes down there, and sends it into the big main pipe. The reason this is important is because if we have it going through the pipe there, then it needs to. Um, basically, we can extract it from this big pipe. And it will just cost an entire strip of the floor. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, this will basically take chlorine, surplus chlorine from these pipes, and send it all the way over to here. The thing is, is that this guy is um, they're basically the same, so it's, it's not, it might not get split at all. It might just send it all through this pipe here. Unless it runs out of methane, or because it runs out of carbon monoxide, and then that guy can produce the carbon monoxide that this guy needs, so it basically balances out. Now, there's another place where salt water is actually being produced, and it's kinda... Kinda, this is literally the most useless substance ever, and that's over here. So this is going to require us to set up a pipe from this guy all the way across. Now, this should be kind of difficult, actually, if there's any pipes in the way. There's more than likely pipes in the way. Um... No, there isn't. Not really. Not at all. Not that many. It's my knowledge. So that means I can just pipe it around here. And if we look up, this should be the wire. And this should be the machine. Okay, this one's the machine. Since we're dealing with um, one of these, a tank, what you can do is you can have the thing face down and you don't need a pump. Which is rather nice. Alright, so I'm setting up the pipes, but we gotta make a wrench. We, we don't have a wrench anymore. It broke. It decided to explode a gate while we were making the last of the pipes, getting them hooked in, and quite clearly, we were almost done. Wait, what? What was that pipe? Wait, what? No, what is this? Sterling silver. Oh, it's. I thought it was chrome. What's. Eh, who cares? A chrome wrench would be stupid to make. It's so expensive. And there we go. That basically will turn all of the stuff into salt. And the rest of water, well, that's gonna just get dumped or something, I don't know. I already have a pipe which dumps the water from certain setups. We just have to get over to the other place and hook it in. And that took exactly all of the wood pipes to make the connection to this guy, which is going to take it to the dumping plant. Or at least that's the hope. I mean, it, honestly, I don't have any idea where that pipe goes. It could go anywhere for all I know. <laughs> and now this guy is producing chlorine. And then we need an item pipe, which will take the salt over from this plant and send it all the way back down to that way. Which it should now be working, and it should now be putting it into here. As you can see, it's now got 12 salt. I don't know if we already put that in there. No, it's got 12 again, so it's working. And slowly the machine is filling with chlorine. Hopefully we will witness its first operation today. I would like to see this thing turn on. It takes 4,700 chlorine to get this guy nice and full. Oh, it did its thing. It did its thing. What did it do? What did it give us? Carbon monoxide and then gaseous titanium tetrachloride. Yes, we finished it. That is titanium in a nutshell. Ugh, statue man is downstairs again.